I mean, to present the uh, Estonian 2050 project. So it was a project uh, led by Nuregu, but uh, also with spatial foresight, uh, Spiekerman and uh, Wagner, and uh, uh, Ixopas from uh, the Polish Academy, Academy of Science. So that was the consortium. Uh, the project, uh, the aim of the project was to develop uh, territorial scenarios for the Baltic Sea region uh, in order to increase evidence based on the territorial di dimension. And uh, it was a targeted analysis project, so it was initiated by, by Vasa. Uh, and uh, to guide their the work with a, with a long term perspective uh, of the Vasa region. And uh, the main outcomes of the project was uh, first we built on the previous ESPON projects that we've done, for the, like the ESPON uh, TIMO, the territorial monitoring as well. Uh, uh, mapping the current state of the Baltic Sea region and identifying the, the factors and the drivers of development. And uh, from that, uh, then building uh, uh, the baseline scenario for 2030 and 2050, and then two alternative territorial scenarios for 2050, and then yeah, policy recommendations. And uh, yeah, this is a classic. Uh, project model uh, figure, but I thought it was good to include it because uh, to show the way up to the scenarios. Of course, it's impossible to predict futures, which you, we have seen the last uh, couple of years. Um, so, but uh, some trends and factors are, of course, more stable. We know about uh, demographic change, for example, it's quite predictable and also that climate will be a very important issue also in the future, as we've heard. So these trends are quite stable. Uh, and then, of course, uh, there are black swans. Uh, I remember sitting there in the beginning of the project in Warsaw discussing black swans and the, the Polish partners brought up a uh, pandemic. And I, I, for me, it felt a bit science fiction. But of course, now we know that it's not science fiction. It can also happen. Uh, it can also become war and things that we haven't foreseen. Uh, so these things are, of course, difficult to, to capture in, uh, in scenarios, and it's not either the point. It, the point is to describe the possible future, and and uh, then we know what uh, policies uh, uh, that will re be required or where we want to go in the future. So that's uh, mainly the, the point of these scenarios. Uh, and I will just start with this baseline scenario so, so this baseline scenario was built on, uh, on more quantitative indicators uh, to see uh, what will the future look like if we follow the path or if uh, if uh, this uh, trends that we identify continue and uh, these trends uh, were also discussed with the stakeholders so let me see here if i have the um, the factors that uh, were discussed, uh, wait, I don't have here, but at least the, with the stakeholders, we discussed some uh, parameters that were thought would be likely in the future. Uh, one was, uh, for example, a, a stable migration in, in intake uh, to the region and uh, also a sta quite stable economic growth. Those two of them. So, given these parameters and looking at this model that Spiegelman and Wagner has uh, used in other ESPON projects as well, this SASI model, uh, the population by 2030, uh, to the left here in the map, uh, in, in the whole region, the population in, in 2030 is expected to be rather the same as in 2019. But uh, you can see that the process of urbanization is ex expected to grow with the decline in mainly rural re regions and uh, increase in urban regions, and also a higher population increase in the Nordic region. But then if you look at uh, the map in 2050, you can see that uh, it's a decline, in almost uh, population decline in most of the Baltic Sea region is expected, except some capital regions and, uh, and yeah, Norway stands out there with a positive uh, population growth. But, uh, so that's trends that are likely to be seen in the future. Uh, also, aging, of course, uh, this will, will happen. Uh, regarding GDP, uh, you can see that uh, uh, that uh, the, the GDP it will look sort of the same with a higher GDP in the western part of the of the region, but uh, 
Uh, but uh, if you look at the change here up to 2030 in the second map, you can see that uh, it is more change in uh, expected in the eastern part of the region. Let's see there, see now if uh, it will be true for Russia and Belarus, but uh, at least uh, with the input that we had at that time, that was the prediction uh, for up to 2030 and up to 2050, a similar increase. Uh, mainly in the eastern part, but not as as quick. You can see from 2030 to 2050. Um, and uh, if you just look at this baseline uh, scenarios, so if you look at the territorial implications, it will continue to, to see the, that the urban areas have a much higher GDP per capita than intermediate uh, and uh, in particular rural areas. And that's also urban areas of the Nordic countries have the highest economic performance by 2050. And one reason is the, that the population development is, is more positive. Not so surprising, I would say. Uh, but then if you also look at this uh, now, I will come into the territorial scenarios that uh, show quite different possible futures. And this was, um, discussed in a participatory manner with uh, the stakeholders of VASAB, identifying uh, which trends and factors that uh, were likely to be important in the future and uh, different paths that, uh, that could, uh, the development could take. And one thing that was common though in uh, these uh, scenarios was that uh, climate would be, and, and uh, protecting the environment would be very important in, in in both these scenarios, and also that the uh, EU, the relation, the European relations would be quite stable. Now it's not been that stable so far with the with the war. Now, but uh, that was one of the assumptions. So the first of these uh, scenarios is, is called well-being in a circular economy, and uh, the idea in this scenario is that uh, in 2050 the Baltic Sea region will have developed into a sharing and circular economy uh, where citizens have uh, consciously decided to change their existing linear economic model in favor of better quality of life. Uh, so it's a, it's a system of repairing and sharing. Manufacturing has been brought back to the region uh, with re-industrialization based on, on technological development and automation. And uh, yeah, technology play a key role in this uh, scenario. And uh, it's also based on a more small scale organic agricultural production. Um, yeah, but uh, but yeah, more small scale than, than before. And if you look then at the territorial implications of, of this uh, scenario, it uh, will uh, show a more decentralized pattern than we've seen so far with the second and uh, third tier cities being more uh, prominent uh, as uh, main centers and uh, it will reduce the importance uh, of the metropolitan regions. And also you can see the, the blue shapes here are the regional manufacturing networks. Uh, so some with high potentials are found in the western part of Poland and in the north of Estonia, and some parts of Latvia and Lithuania, and south of Sweden and south of Finland. And also the identified here the material and technology economic centers uh, that are the yellow ones here on, on the map. And, uh, if we look then at uh, how this will affect the transport, it, the, in this scenario the importance of global and European airports uh, in the region uh, will decline and rather it will be more uh, important with local connectivity between this, uh, the small and medium sized cities. And the green parts here in the map show the agriculture and arable land in, in the southern part of, of the region, uh, mainly in the southern part of the region. And uh, uh, yeah, the improvement of the environment situation of the BSR is a priority of the citizens and the, and the governments. So this scenario basically shows a more decentralized uh, and not as a growth focused 
way path forward to, for the future of the, of the region. And then uh, if you look at the other scenario, that the territorial scenario that was uh, developed, it uh, is called growing into green tech giants, ecological footprint clear up. And in this uh, scenario, the Baltic Sea region is, uh, is a giant in green technology. So it's still a focus on the in environment, but uh, environmental change is achieved mainly through technological uh, developments, uh, like the achievements of the fourth industrial evolution uh, and the mix of um, innovation and green technology, which has led to the reduction in the ecological footprint. And uh, high end innovation and the race for more growth has led to not uh, necessarily a decrease in consumption, like in the other scenario, but uh, to more green and uh, uh, guilt free. And the territorial implications of this scenario maybe look is more like looking like uh, the, the past with the increased uh, importance of the metropolitan areas. And the growth in the in the in these growth uh, centers of the capital cities, and especially here identified are the Copenhagen, Malmo area, and uh, Helsinki, Tallinn, as uh, two green tech giant uh, areas, but also other bigger cities like the capitals and the, and the bigger cities in, in the countries. And uh, the green innovation happens in more urban centers, uh, yeah, like Trondheim, Gothenburg, Berlin, Lodz. Uch, Krakow, Vilnius and Riga, and the uh, high number of foreign direct investments uh, mainly in these uh, in these areas. And that's where the main growth is expected to be in this scenario. And uh, yeah, so in, in this scenario that the airport hubs will become even more important as bridges to the to the between the east and the west, uh, as this uh, Giant uh, green tech giants. Uh, the, Nord the Baltic Sea region is expected to have, be a forerunner in in the world, in the in the global world. So many inventions will come from there, and uh, also the ports are expected to then to be more important. And the rene renewable production uh, will be mainly in uh, in in this uh, green tech. Uh, Areas like the north of uh, in Denmark and north of Germany and south of Sweden, and in the coastal areas between Sweden and Finland. Also, then in this scenario, the smart uh, farming, the technology of also farming, leads to except uh, farming where we have it today. Also, that uh, uh, it can expand north thanks to greenhouse uh, clean energy that would be facilitate. Uh, greenhouses uh, and uh, agriculture uh, even in the northern part of the BSR. Uh, yeah, that was basically the scenarios. Uh, how can this uh, inspire macro regional strategic strategies? Uh, putting uh, it uh, like this can make the macro regionals more tangible and also provide a, a narrative and a, and uh, you can put your region in a larger context, both in space and in, in time. Uh, it and provides a area of reflection, and that's mainly what it is, I, I would say, and um, may enhance the participation of uh, and cooperation of different stakeholders. And uh, yeah, I will end there.